Daniel, like we were discussing again at breakfast this morning, you know, this world that you have grown up in and come out of is a world that, you know, people are familiar with, sort of from occasionally from headlines or sort of from a theoretical idea of what um, sort of the wrong side of the tracks America is, but don't have a lot of direct experience with in, in sort of center, center field, day-to-day -day American life. Um, oftentimes these books are called dark, these characters are called dark, but the question is whether or not, you know, they're just real. Uh, I was just wondering if uh, dark is not a synonym for life <laughs> in general. Uh, uh, I was fortunate in, in regards to becoming a writer, fortunate that from, the, from uh, childhood on, um, I knew people who would already been arrested in some way and stuff before I was out of grade school. And uh, so I knew them as people. I mean, we played kickball and stuff, and then two years later, off they go to Boonville or Algoa or somewhere. And, uh, uh, so I, I never really had this idea of, of, of this is some class of people that arrived from some other culture and just showed up in, uh, to, to do mayhem. They're uh, just pe the kind of human beings you've known all your life and uh, uh, I've had close relatives, I've had to, uh, you know, you might appreciate this, uh, one of my closest relatives who got sent away to the penitentiary. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, judge was bending over backwards not to send him, and uh, this is one of my brothers, and uh, I mean, the judge was really a good guy. He was really trying not to send him, uh, but he did want to lecture him about his repeated uh, non-compliance. And uh, my brother, being one of us, naturally eventually said, hey, judge. And the judge said, yes, fuck you. And, the, and then the judge kind of, and he said, did you hear me? I said, fuck you, judge. <laughs> Bang! <laughs> Off to the... <laughs> Off to several months of shock incarceration in the penitentiary, too, not some mid-level thing. And I thought, well, that, that's an interesting crossroads there, because the guy was really trying hard not to do that. But there was something emotional in him that made him force the issue to the uh, extent that he actually ended up doing a shock incarceration. And uh, so... And he's not the only relative I've had up there. So uh, I've known them all as just as individuals. And uh, this idea of presenting them as humans is sort of my, uh, it may look like indiscriminate empathy or something uh, uh, if you're not careful. And a few years ago, I got robbed. And uh, uh, it wasn't a lot of money, but it's the idea. And, uh, I was ranting and raving and stomping around and preaching blue peril and everything. And my wife said, uh, when I paused for breath, she said, don't forget their humanity, Danny. And uh, that sort of <laughs> let the air right up. I was, and that's right, I, I was forgetting that now that they had become the other there for a minute when they stole from me. But uh, 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 so the, it's just a complicated circumstance. The, the neighborhood I live in is uh, I don't have to live there. I just choose to. And, People are so, somewhat surprised by it, but uh, there are actually are parts of America where you can still buy a house for 15 or 20 grand, and uh, uh, this is one of those areas. And, uh, uh, a lot of times they'll have a little bit of a tilt to them or something, <laughs> sway back roof or something like that. But uh, I just actually, uh, uh, it's some kind of uh, misbegotten. Democratic fellowship feeling or something because <laughs> there's no advantage to being there whatsoever. But, uh, <laughs> but over the years, I've just kind of settled in and it, it just feels so much like home to me. Now, the, the new neighbors I have that are the meth, they're not just meth people, they're cutters also. So, and they won't wear shirts. I don't know if meth makes you sweaty all the time, but. Uh, so they got cut, you know, hundreds of cuts everywhere you go on their arms and everything. And uh, they have an infant in the house and a, a toddler. And the windows have been broken out because of temper tantrums and everything. And um, I just watch it. And, you know, your heart breaks, but you cannot have a conversation with them or anything. So uh, both you have an instinct to... Uh, reach out and also a realization that sometimes you can't. So all of these things kind of just, to me that just seems like life and I'm always surprised when I'm called dark. I was 
I always have a little double take on that. You must voucher time there sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds reasonable, actually. 